Hello everybody, it's Jillian, and I'm actually wearing a short sleeve shirt today. Oh my god, you can see my arms. It's going to be hot today, so I'm looking forward to the summertime. I really am. Um, so, somebody uh, sent me an email through my business page, asked me a question. They're very subjective, of course. Cancer disease and chronic illness is very subjective. Cancer disease and chronic illness has you look from a very narrow perspective because you're looking through the eyes of your disease. When you look through the eyes of your disease, everything that you say, do, feel, think, everything is going to be filtered through your disease. And so it's very impossible to be objective. And so I'm learning that... I'm going to be dealing with a very subjective type of base, of course, in the beginning. And I knew that. And I know there's always going to be questions. And so I don't mind answering these questions from someone who sends me an email through my business page, like a legit question. Because, you know, I really can't be subjective in a book or advertising. So the only way that I can speak to uh, to subjectivity is through social media because you have a lot more freedom through social media to speak about diseases, specific diseases. Okay? And so but she asked me, will J she she asked me this. She asked me um I've been going to doctors and therapies and I have OCD, will J juice help with that? And that right, that question, just so you guys know what subjectivity is, that's a very subjective question. But you guys can help when you are dealing with cancer disease and chronic illness, dealing with remedies that are very subjective. That is going to be your outlook. That's going to be the way in which you deal with everything you say, do, feel, think. And it's very hard to get out of that. So I will speak to subjectivity from people outside of my group if it's not like you know, the same thing about like salt. Because I don't talk about people's specific diseases in my books. I can't. I can't say that Jilly Juice is going to cure this, this, and that. Because Jilly Juice is not a cure. So she asked me, will Jilly Juice help with that? Well, Jilly Juice is food. Well, she's like, she's probably in her head, well, I eat food. Okay. So how is your food so much different than the other food that's out there, right? Well, here's the thing. You know, all of your diseases and your diagnoses and all of your anomalies is the body trying to heal and it's trying to find a, a different way to deal with your imbalances and it you know you, the imbalances in your gut are sending mixed messages to your brain and then you're doing these repetitive things like you're looping so OCD is like somebody who continuously writes horrible articles about people because they're trying to make money for their YouTube account. That's like OCD, okay? It's when you're doing the same thing over and over again and you're expecting to have some kind of payout. Your body is expecting to live when it's going through these repetitive motions. It's dependent on you doing these repetitive motions I mean, as far as in your mind, is it really dependent in your in your body and spirit? It probably isn't, but you don't know this because you have an imbalance in your chemistry that's causing a repetition, like on a really, you know, in a major, major basis. It's not like, you know, your habits every day, you get up, you brush your teeth and, you know, these are some pretty um, intense repetitions, like over obsessing about washing your hands or like the other day. I forgot to put the table of contents in, and I think a couple of years ago, I would have been like, holy crap, I forgot to do something, I gotta go, and you know, and, and I would be obsessing over it, like literally, but I know that no matter what, things will get fixed, and so you're able to, uh, like, deal with some of the things that, 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 that go wrong, and make a left turn, the mistakes that you've made, and you're not going to overly obsess and think about it repetitiously on a continuous basis. You'll know things will be okay in the end. You'll just go and correct the mistake and then bam, you move on to the next thing. Well, people with OCD or those types of anxieties, it, it's, it becomes an obsession. And so it's safer to be in repetition 
and not go outside of those boundaries. I mean, I know I'm sounding like like I'm trying to be a doctor, but I'm I'm really looking at it from from a macro point of view because right now OCD is from a micro perspective, and it's through the perspective of a person, and, and OCD can come out in different ways just relative to whatever you know uh, things that you're that are going on because you can be OCD about washing your hands, you can be OCD about you know a lot of different things cleanliness, um, anal retentative, um, type of stuff. And some of it's, is livable. with bull. You can live with it. Some, you know, you really can't cause they're really out, out there, but jelly juice is not a cure. It, I can't say when those repetitions, those thought processes are going to stop, but I could say that at some point they will, when you heal and seal and you feed your body correctly, there's no timetable. I could tell anybody. I mean, I had, a lot of anxiety and maybe some OCD type of characteristics with the PMDD because of the hormonal fluctuations. I felt like within the first couple of weeks, a total breath, a sigh of relief when I was doing the waterfalls. When I, uh, when uh, one day I woke up and I sat in my bedroom on my desk looking out the window going like, oh my God, I can breathe. I don't have any anxiety. This person can say this. And, and it would happen in stages because I was still getting triggered by so many different things, but I still had, you know, major imbalances and things that were unresolved. So as you do the J-Juice and things get resolved in your, at the micro level of your body, mind, and spirit, the things that would set you off or get you all triggered into your OCD would not be there anymore. But I can't tell you when. I can't tell you what that's going to look like. You will know because you know your triggers, you will know when the J-juice is kicking in and you might see an exacerbation because anytime anyone has cancer disease and chronic illness and autoimmunity and all that, it's the body trying to heal and you have not given it what it needs. And if you have, you haven't repaired at the le- at the cellular level to, to heal and seal so you're able to absorb and then release, okay? And so... Um, and so at some point, you know, you may see an exacerbation of your issues. <laughs> I mean, I saw, and I was getting, and I was doing the detoxes with the bentonite clay a long time ago. Um, it was a relief for a minute. Like I saw a window of like clarity and it was like, oh my God, I felt like I was like, you know, on in seventh heaven or something. Right. And then all of my candida came back because all of those heavy metals in the bent night clay were feeding the fungus. So all of my issues and yeast infections, they came, they came to my body with like with a vengeance. And so, um, so anyways, uh, as, as I do the J juice, you know, I mean, I was still doing the pink salt. I'm wondering if those with, with major yeast infections and do the, the white salt, how much faster they'll get through keeping, you know, their, their yeast really under control. I mean, cause yeah, there was yeast in the J juice with the pink salt because of all the heavy metals, but you know, you're going to have you people eat foods with that, that would feed the yeast. You have yeast all the time. It's not like you're, you're trying to get rid of yeast, but the salt is what keeps the yeast at bay. The salt and the probiotics and all of that is what keeps the microbiome balanced, the nutrition your immune system, when it starts strengthening, will keep the microbiome balanced and your biochemistry balanced, but it's going to take a minute. So I would say that, you know, at some point you'll see a lot of your issues disappear when I can't tell you, but if you understand that nutrition in this form with the type of chemistry that it's made up of, is what is missing with people who have been diagnosed with cancer disease and chronic illness, which is everybody, because guess what the biggest issues are with the holistic allopathic? They suppress the prostaglandins, which is a type of hormone, it's a healing hormone, and it, it in some with predispositions will have uh, diagnoses of like high blood pressure and heart issues because when you suppress the prostaglandins on a continuous basis, <clears throat> it constricts your blood vessels and it will exacerbate your heart and cardiovascular system. Okay, so that's why that is what's wrong with the with the holistic allopathic is because of their intentions and their remedies are suppressing the right hormones and expressing the wrong ones, but they're right in that in 
When you express the wrong hormones, it's because a body is going into a type of triage and it's trying to deal with the way in which you're dealing with your chemistry. And it's the wrong way, but the body is going to try to adapt to the wrong way. And then that's why eventually when people have chronic conditions, they don't live through them because the body is going to still keep trying to heal itself and it's going to steal all the resources. I mean, when someone's hair is so white, like you see, look at, look at your grandma and grandpa. Look at your friends who are losing the minerals in their hair. Like I can see like little white parts, but I have mostly black over like the white. I have a few white streaks, but mostly it's black. Those that have that are getting, you know, gray and white in their beard, in their pubes, in their hair, it's that that their hair and their skin and their nails and their bones are insurance policies to keep the vital organs going. When there really isn't if you don't have any more hair and then you know your bones are getting depleted and your skin is becoming more sallow and more papery thin. That's when you know someone is not going to survive some major virus in the environment, which is why we have people who are dying from the COVID with pre-existing conditions or they're 80 or they're 57. Some dude, you know, died of a heart attack here in Ohio that was part of some organization. And, and they're like, oh, someone was being sarcastic. Like, oh, they're probably going to categorize it as, as the COVID. Well, hell yeah, because the COVID is a new virus in the environment. He has pre-existing conditions. He can't handle the antibody accumulation. That's how heart attacks happen. When you have an overabundance of antibodies and it's, 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 it's blocking up your blood vessels with all of those, that antigen and antibodies. Yeah. And you already have pre-existing conditions. Yeah. You're, you, you will not survive a heart attack when you have that much antibody accumulation from some kind of excess entity in your environment that you have no immunity to. So of course, that's why people die because they have pre-existing conditions and then they're not giving their body what it needs. So we have people in my group that are that have the COVID or had the COVID or dealing with the COVID and they're seeing a great reversal in their issues. They're seeing a major success in getting the mucus out. Every morning I get the mucus out. Every morning I'm like hawking up stuff because overnight my body goes through its processes. Either I go poop. I haven't done waterfalls in a minute. I might do waterfalls actually today. So I'm going to drink about two cups today because I don't really need more than that unless I really, really want to. But um, I'm doing okay. Uh, because here's the thing. When, when you increase your dosages, well, the reason why you increase any of your dosages is when you start really feeling chronic conditions. Like I knew that the COVID's in the environment. So I, so I didn't drink a lot of my JJ's. I drank a little bit. But I really wanted to see how my body was going to handle a new entity in the environment and then how my body reacts to it. And I'll just deal with the pain. Now, I know I have enough of the minerals and nutrients and all of that because I've been doing JJ's for the four years and I'm eating food. Okay, food is what the body needs as fuel to then maximize nutrition. But if you're not, if you haven't really healed and sealed, then you're not going to maximize the absorption. So... You know, when those that have been healed and sealed and they are exhibiting characteristics of, of some kind of symptoms because of a new virus, the food is going to be their best arsenal along with the J-juice. So they eat the food, they drink the J-juice, the J-juice energizes the food, and then they're able to get maximum benefit. And if they want to get waterfalls or if they want to clear the pipes, like I feel like I need to clear the pipes <sighs> because... I was exposed to a couple viruses the last couple weeks and you know I need to uh, I need to do that so you'll know because you'll know your body and how it's holding on to stuff or maybe you're feeling bloated and maybe you're carrying some extra weight so sometimes you know when you maybe you eat like you eat more of the carbs and the sugars and not you know so much of the of the J juice you know you'll see then more of the weight go on and then you kind of mitigate some of the carbs and sugars and you drink more of the J juice and you still eat food and you eat some meat and eat the J juice, you're going to start seeing your body then uh, change as far as the weight and you can be able to control your weight that way. So that's how I see how you can use J juice. You, you eat food and then the J juice is a balancing force. And sometimes if you stay off of J juice for a while and you just eat like the, the pastas and the breads and, and, and your meats as well, that you need to have to balance it out with the J juice because mostly everything out there is some kind of sugar, refined sugar or carb, which is not bad. It's all what your body needs 
but um, you got to have a good balance of the salt and sugar. So salt takes off what the sugar puts on, sugar puts on what the salt takes off, and vice versa. If you find that there's imbalances, you can always go to J juice. If you really need to, if you're on the J juice and you're, and you know having weight on your body and on the J juice and healed is not a bad thing. Because even back then in the 1800s, 17, 1800s, Rubenesque women, which were bigger women, they were seen as very healthy. Now, I'm not saying that obesity is okay, but do you have to have a very, you know, skinny, skinny body, um, like in like your underweight or like some, you know, model in the industry, which we do have models that are doing my J-Juice and they're working out fine. But um, but really, you know, the the... the Health is when you have enough reserves to handle, you know, a potential aggressive environment. Okay. And so being too skinny, you don't have enough resources. Being too over overweight, you have too many resources. And then the body goes into some kind of weird anomalous um, outcome. And so it is, and the weight attacks your vital organs. So there is that balance. Okay. Now, if you are working out and you're, and you're trying to build up and sculpt your body, okay, you drink more of the J juice because you're going through a type of uh, shape shifting. You are mutating your muscles to be bigger. You're manipulating your muscles to be bigger. So you want to keep drinking the J juice to repair the damage from all of your exercise, which we don't really require that on the J juice because at some point, you're going to, you know, you'll, you'll do your exercise, but it won't be because you're trying to lose weight or be healthy. You'll do it because you want to sculpt your body to have maybe a six pack because you like it. Maybe you want to have more of a definition in your arms. So you're going to do repetitious motions and then you'll drink the J juice to repair any kind of damage, any long-term damage. And so, and release lactic acid too, because there's electrolytes. Okay. Even though you're taking in lactic acid with J juice, the electrolytes is what balances it all out. So you'll be able to use J juice as a support to whatever you do, whether it's whether it's doing marathons or sports, to whatever it is, to losing weight, gaining weight, you know, um, to whatever. I mean, you could be off the J juice for like a month. Maybe you go for a month sabbatical somewhere where there is no way to get the J juice, but you poop every day. You eat a pretty light diet. Because, yeah, when you do eat a lot of processed foods, which aren't inherently bad, if you don't really have a very uh, energizing force to release, like, the excess poop, some of it can get caught up in your system. And that's when the J-juice is there to just give the body the extra push when it needs to. Because that's what goes on right now out there is that people are eating and they're expelling a little bit, but they're also holding on to a lot which is why you're seeing the, the dad bods that are out there, the guys with the big bellies, the girls with the big bellies, why a lot of you know, weight is carried in the gut. A lot of it's poop, okay? And so um, so that's why JJ's is like, gets kind of a weird rap, like we're a poop cult. Because yeah, we have so many people that are holding on to their poop and they can't handle, they don't understand waterfalls. They think it's like diarrhea. No, it's just... <laughs> It's just autophagy. It's just the body expelling and expressing and getting rid of the excess. Because even a person who is skinny has a lot of poop. But a person that's really, really skinny doing J-juice, they need to add some sugar or they need to eat some carbs while doing the J-juice. Because, or they need to eat some meat. Because that's one of the biggest things that uh, the vegans and vegetarians are missing out is the advanced data pack, the hormones, the fatty acids, the amino acids, the pro-hormones, and the minerals that are in the meat. Yeah, you can be subjective and itemize those things out. You could try in the vegetables, but that's not going to be enough. You're not going to be eating enough vegetables to get the advanced forms of data that you would get in a piece of bacon or a steak or some chicken. Okay? And so that's some of the issues that some people out there with food issues are going to have to overcome. But in our society, you can get away with being relatively malnourished because you don't have to go and throw logs like the Amish do when they're raising a barn or they're tending to cattle. Okay, so, you know, if you're more of a... But if you're doing exercise and yoga and, and all of those things at a gym, then you're going to need the meat to keep the, your brain going, to keep your muscles going, to keep all of your... Your, your body going because you're losing so much when you're at the gym doing yoga or doing this and doing that. 
I mean, you got to really replenish your resources. So, um, so anyways, J juice is for everybody's situation and you can get away with so many different lifestyles in our society with the J juice. However, you know, when there's an environment such as this, it's so aggressive, you're going to need like the most advanced arsenal ever. You're going to need the meat, the milk, the cheese, you know, the carbs, the sugars, uh, the fruits and vegetables and nuts, the oils, all of that. But you're not going to be using some of these herbs and extracts and detoxes as a way to combat, combat your issues because all of your, your diagnosis and symptoms is the body trying to heal. Even when you're off the J juice, all of your diagnoses and symptoms is the body trying to heal. And you have just applied the wrong chemistry every single time you go to a doctor or a naturopathic. They will give you something to stop the healing process. And then you think you're healed and think you've earned that. No, you haven't. You just, you just went in like, what do people do as a shortcut when they don't want to, oh, that's right. When, when your alarm clock, when, not your alarm clock, but when your, your fire alarm is like chirping and someone wants to like stop it from chirping because you need to change the battery, they just unhook the whole thing. They don't go and change the battery and earn that no chirping. They just unhook the whole thing. And then now you have no protection. So you don't have that fire alarm because it's chirping because you unhooked, you took the battery out or you unhooked it. And so, and you haven't put a new battery in. And so now it's like totally rendered useless. And then if there's a fire, you're screwed. If you forget to put a battery in, that's how I see people with that are that go to naturopathics and homeopathics. They're like a person that basically takes takes out the battery and and disables their chirping alarm because they don't want to hear it. Okay, and that's not what JJ's does. You got to you got to change that battery, and it's not going to be like one easy you know change a battery and that's it. It's going to take some time. You have so many different little batteries in your body that need to be recharged, and it's going to take a while. But don't disable your batteries because you don't want to hear it or feel it. And that's what the holistic allopathic do. They take it out or they disable or they suppress or they anesthetize. And that's the same thing with those little chirping alarms, those chirping fire alarms. People don't deal with it at the root level. And so they put themselves in a situation. So anyways, all right, do your thing. I got stuff to do, but um, you guys have a great day. Thanks for listening. Bye.